and you join us live from Birchwood Forestry in the midst of a beautiful woodland in Herefordshire and I'm joined today by John from Birchwood Forestry. Hello John. Hello there. <laughs> um, so I'm Louise Wright and I'm from the Woody and today we're doing our July 2019 Cookout Live and we are going to show you today how to cook a delicious wild rabbit. So we've got one cooking um, on the fire pit now, but before we go and show you how to do that, um, I wanted to talk to John um, a little bit about Birchwood Forestry, and then we're going to get straight down to it and show you how to skin a wild rabbit. So I'm just going to bring this closer so that you can have a little look. Can you see that? There? Okay, so we've got a beautiful wild rabbit and we're going to cook that whole. So I'm just going to put this down here, John, just a second. And so, so John, I know that we spoke before yes. because you supply us with your amazing um, charcoal at Virtual Forestry. But tell us a little bit about you know your company and how long you've been going and what you do. Yeah, so the name originated from Birchwood. Okay. Um, this is 65 acres of um, Triple F I woodland, and uh, we're in about the fifth year of a long-term management plan um, okay. to manage the forest and bring it back into active management and produce okay. um, resourceful timber from it. And one of our main projects is charcoal. Yeah. So where we've got charcoal. overstood yeah. hazel, which isn't much good for your bean poles and your smaller products and hazel sticks. Okay. Um, we can mainly that and all the top of oak trees. Um, we can use those to make good quality British charcoal. Yeah, and it is wonderful. So we now supply um, with our fire pit some of John's charcoal, and it is amazing. So we've been using some of that this morning. I don't know if you can see around us, we're in a beautiful woodland and this is an SSI woodland isn't yeah. it John? So it's like a special scientific interest in, right, the, y, okay. in the Y Valley here. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. So we want to show you because we're going to be with you for about 20 minutes today and it isn't a long time. So we want to show you um, how to actually skin um, a rabbit. So you can get hold of a rabbit in, in many ways. Um, so probably, wherever you are in the country, you could go to your local butcher and ask for a wild rabbit. And rabbit is a wonderful meat because it is very high in protein, it's very low in fat, and it tastes delicious, doesn't it John? Yes. <laughs> it tastes really good, um, even if you just have it naked, as we are going to have it today. So, but of course John is based um, on a farm and it's a method of natural pest control for you, isn't it John? Yeah, so rabbits are plentiful around on the woodland edge, in the yeah. woodland itself. Um, you know, they do a lot of damage to crops and grassland. Mm -hmm. So naturally, if you don't keep on top of them, uh, you'll be inundated and lose a lot of you know, value to your crops and you know, mm -hmm. our, our food source as well. So um, yeah, they're a natural wild rabbit. Yeah, and it's really sustainable. If, you know, we were talking to Ollie, um, we were doing some bushcraft earlier, now we're saying actually it's a really sustainable um, type of meat. It's not farmed, it's really wild. So if you're really conscious about where your food comes from, then you can't get anything, um, you know, from, um, you know, direct from the woodland to your plate than a rabbit. So we're going to come over to the, um, the cutting block now and we're going to show you. So we've got, can you see that there? So this is one of um, John's beautiful big chopping block there. Have you got us in focus, Peter? So this is um, a lovely um, wild rabbit um, that you shot last night. Yeah. So with rabbit, um, it's very good um, when it's really fresh. So you have to gut them pretty much immediately or it goes green. So John last night um, gutted the rabbit and kept it in the chiller. And so now you took the main yeah. part of the, you know, the gut side, didn't you? So the main part, just a small incision in its yeah. stomach area there. Um, and just put your two fingers in and pull, pull the, uh, the guts actually out yeah. and they'll just drop out and that's all you need to do and then you can uh, go down the route of skin if you want to put them or you know, last night if you want them today we kept them in the fridge overnight. Okay, so, so this is our beautiful rabbit and so what are we going to do first? How do you kind of, I, I suppose we should say at this point that if you've got a really fresh rabbit the skin will come off really easily, it's like taking off a glove. You know, with a, a rabbit that you've had in a chiller, or if you have the frosted one, if you've got one from the butcher that's been frozen, it's a bit like jug hair, um, it takes a little bit more gut it, you know, a little bit more taking off, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Enough, that's right. So it, depending on how long you've had it, um, will be slightly different. But we, this one's been um, in the freezer, over, well, in the chiller overnight, so we're going to give it a go. So John, so we've got so a number of knives here. What yeah, that's use it. First? Um, yeah. So all you need to do with a knife is just make a small incision in the um, alongside the rib cage. 
um, and then just pull the skin apart. So you're basically actually going to pull the skin in, into front, uh, from the middle to the front and okay. from the middle to the back. Okay. And then you just take the uh, bottom of each leg off and the neck, uh, head off at last of all. Okay. So we'll start doing that. We'll okay. just get the. Uh, so all you do is, can you see that, Peter? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pinch the uh, pinch the rabbit there, okay. anywhere there, and then just get a knife and just. So you need a really sharp, sharp knife, knife, a really nice sharp kitchen knife. And if you're and into yeah. your bushcraft, you'll have a you know a sharp knife anyway. We've got one. We okay. need that one there. Okay. There we go. So okay. that's all you need to do. Can you get that? Is that nice? So you've got just a skin okay. coming away nicely from the uh, from the, the meat in there. Okay. And you just have to put your two fingers either side and just pull it apart like that. Okay. So if you're lucky, there's a nice young rabbit like this one is, it will just pull off nice and easily. Yeah, that has pulled off easily, isn't it? So there we are. So pick whichever way you want to go. Yep. Then so you put it over the tail. So the go. tail stays on till the end, so that's that sort of comes off. And you pull down each side of the legs all the way down to the last joints. And this, this um, the meat here, there's not a lot of meat on a rabbit, but there's a lot um, on the hind legs here. So you want to say as much of that as possible. So you don't want to cut it too high up here. So as low down to the ankle as okay. you can. So there's not much left on there, meat. So okay. and the best way is to be honest is to snap yeah. on those joints. So pull them back to away from which you normally do. Okay. We're just going to break the ball joint just on like each that. one. Just no. watch out for the sharp bone if you get okay. one. And all you need to do then is just get your sharp knife and cut through it. That's it. Using a bit back to front of my hand here. That's okay, just so you can see. Like that. And we'll leave the tail on till last. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. So then so the top end? So the top end, we'll just put it exactly the same. So it's coming off nice and easy again. Okay. Just work your way around. Take your time. It right. only takes a couple of minutes anyway. That's it. And if you are stuck, so you can actually try and get your thumb, work your thumb under there. And it gives the same with any, you know, not just rabbit, you know, other animals' skin. You can work your, work your way off it. Yeah. And there you get your finger behind there and just pull that last off like that. And Go. There you go. Just put it as far up the neck, just like that. And you've got a nice clean bit of cut off. Okay. Do you want to do that? Is that okay, Peter? I don't know if anyone at home um, has ever um, done this before, but it's it's really easy, you know, and it's a really nice clean and neat to go, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got to break the neck. Yeah. And the good thing is you can just go back and do it. Yeah. So again using your sharp knife, I'd just like to say this um, this knife here um, is one that my blacksmith has made for me um, out of a um, harass. So you can see on the other side when we do that, I'll just show you one there. This is the rasp yeah. from um, that we'd use on um, horseshoes. Yeah, no, horseshoes. Okay. Yeah, so it's lovely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So something that we're thinking about doing, making some beautiful knives, um, so that might come um, early next year. And just while John's doing this, all the recipes um, that we do at The Woody, you can find on our webpage, um, which is www.thewoody.com. And across social media, we're always found um, at The Woody or backslash The Woody, so that you can kind of catch up on those recipes and back videos from us. So we've nearly um, taken that off now. And if there's any um, odd hairs, going straight onto the, um, onto the fire pit, they'll burn off anyway. Yeah. So you just got um, left of the okay. over the neck, and you can just. That's why it's good to have a good weighted knife. Yeah. And you can just get a, a bit of weight behind it. And just like that. And just take it through. Just go around. Okay. That's nice and easy. And that's all clean then. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do is the tail. Before um, we look at. Yeah. Yeah, before we look at taking out the inside. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. So, do you want to zoom in a little bit, Peter? Can you see that? Is that okay? Can you see it nice and closely? So, what we're doing now is that we want to remove the tail. But of course, there's other bits around the tail, so we want to sort that bit out, haven't we? Jack? Yeah, it's just a lot. 
a few okay. small bits in here. Okay. Um, just the last bit of the intestines, which you want to get out, and just okay. uh, main thing, just keep it clean. So just all you need to do is uh, open up there, get your big knife, open up the pelvis. and then just rip the pelvis through. And that helps with the cooking. And that helps with the cooking. Helps to get that inside out. And all you need to get a small knife and just run down the inside yeah. of the bone. And there's no fat on this rabbit. It's hardly any. That's the you know the wonderful thing. We're talking about such high protein um, on here. So you can see this lovely pink meat, you know, with a lot of, you know, different um, types of meat, you know, it can be quite fatty, which can be tasty, but for a high protein diet, and low fat, can't be too it. And I was brought up on rabbit, rabbit stew, um, roast rabbit, were you John, was it something you had when you were young? Stew, I yeah, think sort of rabbit. kids of the 70s and 80s, you know, I think that was, you know, rural community, which is what I'm from, you know, rural Herefordshire, definitely, um, it, was a, it was a staple. Yeah, and you know, a lot of butchers do say now, you know, they do have a quite a good demand for, for rabbits. Right. Um, you know, generally from the older generation, you say from the yeah. 70s, 80s generation, they're still after yeah. that for their stews and you know, their pies. Yeah. So that's still possible to do. Yeah. So we've um, cleared that out there. Okay. And the last bit at the top is, okay. just, just to take the tail off, is that nice bit of... Um, okay, I'm just going to over here. Clean then. Right, okay. So you've got a clean carcass now which is all edible. Okay. Even with these bits inside. Right. So what have we got in here? So, so these are the bits that um, the bits that you know you can perhaps leave in it but just because these are really tasty bits. Yeah, so like any animal you can eat the liver, um, kidneys, heart if you like, some people even eat the lungs, they all look healthy. So what you do is just have a quick look, they all look healthy, no white spots or anything on them. Um, so normally if you have them from the butchers, they'll be presented like that. So right, you just gotta okay. take just simply just cut them out. Okay. You literally come out of there. Just put them in this tray here. Okay. You can say. Two kidneys. And you might say if you have a fatty rabbit, you'll have a nice bit of fat around the kidneys. Okay. Like so just a little bit of time to prepare your rabbit, but so worth it. And you've got a small membrane up inside which above there you just got to cut through that you've got your heart and your, your heart and your lungs you just need to get your open fingers in up, put your fingers in pull that out pull that out heart lungs A nice clean rib cage. Lovely. So what we're going to do now um, to prepare this rabbit further is that these bits, you know, the side bits, there's no meat breast, on there at the breast, all. Yeah. Yeah, that, there's nothing on there. So we're going to cut those out which will help with our cooking. So I'm just going to cut the whole thing off. And thin and those up. It, yeah. Take it all off. It's, you know, it's, um, it's no good at all. And then we're going to break the rib cage because we're going to do a butterflied um, rabbit because that'll be easier to cook. So we're just going to then spread it open and then we're going to put a dressing on it, or we would, and then we're going to put it um, onto the fire pit. So yeah, just a good, nice clean break. And cut it off. That's it, and open it up. And it doesn't matter, so the ribs will break, they're really fine. So yeah, just flatten it out um, with, a, um, with a big knife and there we are. So today we are just going to cook this, we are out in the woods, we're just going to put a very simple um, dressing on this to cook it. So we're going to leave this rabbit here, um, I'll just get a, um, a plate for that. Here, ready. Oh actually we'll leave that on, let's put it on here or in here, okay. just for a second, because we're going to prepare that one and we're now going to show you how we've been cooking it. Oh, I'm so, just rinse my hands. Yep, you rinse your hands. So, so here's our fire pit. So we today are cooking on our stainless steel woody fire pit. So we've got a stainless steel fire pit and our stainless steel grill. And we put our rabbit on here um, about quarter two. So that was about half an hour ago. And we've cooked, turned it every 10 or 15 minutes. So with a rabbit, 
The thickest part are going to be um, the hind legs um, and the, the stomach cavity, um, the back cavity. So we're going to allow those to cook. So as you can see with our rabbit, the way, just the way that the backbone is, let's see John, um, that it has, it's pushed it up, hasn't it John? Yeah. So we've um, pushed it down. You know, the last one that we did, you know, we just um, broke through the backbone. The reason for cooking it whole, um, you could joint it, you know, and you'd have six nice joints and we'll joint it shortly, you know, when it's finished cooking, is that if you cook it whole, you know, it, the moisture is retained, isn't yeah. it? So it's just that little bit more succulent. But try either, you know, having it in um, um, small um, sections is really easy and then it's easier to sort of to hand out. So you can see the lovely sort of caramelised on the top. Looking good. It? Yeah, it is looking good. So how long has it been in now, John? So uh, that's been half in. Hour, so that's it, about yeah. half an hour, isn't it? So let's have a look. Let's let's with our um, spatula and our fork just just turn it over. Just over on here. So let's see. So where are we? Yeah. So we are just gonna. So we've got a little bit more cooking to do on here. So I might actually just turn it back because we had some picking on there. Can you see that? So we've got a nice end there. And today, as I said, we are cooking on John's charcoal. So we've got a lovely heat in here. So how much charcoal, John? I always get asked how much charcoal, um, you know, do you put in? How much do you, because you do them in kilo bags, three kilo bags. What do you recommend to yeah. start it? So it varies on everyone's different um, way of their method of cooking and okay. their barbecue. Okay. If you've got a controllable, barbecue where you control the airflow you can get away okay. with hardly using very little okay. if you've got an open barbecue with lots of ventilation okay. um, you'll get through a bit more naturally because yeah. you, know, you can't control the airflow okay. um, but generally like cooking for something like a rabbit on here one key would be perfectly adequate right um, okay. you need to leave it 15 20 minutes okay. um, and it'll be well Did away you go, go. Yeah. Um, so we've got as with sort of all charcoal I don't know if you can see in there it's um, you know it's white you've got the you know the red embers in there that sort of lovely sort of white charcoal so it's giving off a lot of heat and actually in the woods keeping the midges away That's isn't it, it? And you won't, <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll end up yeah you'll end up all round grey thinner pieces left okay um with this you'll just end up when it's fully cooked out you'll end up with just dust yeah it's amazing so you won't have any residual um, no and it is fantastic for your garden mm. so um yeah so after you know i always get asked about how to clean it out and with a fire pit it's always good to clean it out the next day when it's gone cold because it's really great for the health of the metal because any um, debris in the bottom or so any ash will hold water and that can be abrasive so the best thing to do is to get a dustpan and brush in dustpan and brush it out and then put it on your garden um, or if you don't have one you know put it somewhere safe to dispose of it safely so um, what we've been cooking in here um, we've cooked some jacket potatoes um, as well so let's have a look we pass us the, um, the corn job so we've um, let's put so the corn in there, yeah. So and then let's put some. Yeah, actually, let's throw some of that corn in. We've just show more. really how to do it. So, so this is a um, a whole corn on the cob, and you can get these um, from your grocer, um, from the supermarket. We're lucky enough to live um, near Lox Garage, which it just houses absolutely everything stuff um, you can possibly imagine. So we love Lox Garage. So we're just going to put um, this into the side of the um, the fire pit in the skid because when it's cooked. It just this just hangs it and when it's cooked you can open it up and inside it is beautifully cooked and steamed in there. Can you see that? How easy that is? Nice and soft and tender. It is, it's okay. lovely. It's really lovely. So I suppose we had those in earlier for about maybe about 15, 20 minutes, yeah, didn't we? Minutes, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't take a long time and then having it, you know, just with a little bit of butter, perfect. So again, something really simple to have outside and some jacket potatoes, a little bit of corn on the cob and then perhaps a little bit of um, watercress salad or something. The best thing on a barbecue, you know, a fire pit, yeah. is to cook the vegetables whole, you know. Uh, mm. Anything from pineapples, fruit, yeah, tomatoes, everything, just put yeah. them on whole. Yeah, and, well let's um, put, you know, let's put some of these, you know, directly on there now and we have those um, just to show you what it's like without them falling off there. So, so today, as I said, we've just got some really simple um, food for you. So our rabbit, we just put that on there. Um, our rabbit has been going for about 20 minutes now, do you think? So what time is it? This one here? Yeah, so yeah, here. That's like a half so, an hour now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good half an hour. So, so I think, let's give it one more turn, John. 
and then see um, if we think those legs are, are cooked. Because we'd like to show you then, you know, a good way just to um, to joint it and to serve it up. So actually, that's look, not looking bad, is it? No. Do you want to get your knife in there, John, and just test that? Yeah, just see if it's... We can have a look down the yeah. side of the leg here. Yeah. Look, just as you do a chicken, just look for some, you know, yeah. um, clear... Clear liquid. Clear liquid, which is there, perfect. No bloody liquid, so you're good to go on that we're one. We're good to go, right. So what we're going to do, so we showed you how to prepare a rabbit, and we're going to put this one, um, we'll put this one over onto our block. So if we just put it on there, John. Clean chopping board. Lovely. Oh, oh, yes, on our clean chopping board. So do you want to turn it around, Peter? We'll just go on to here now. So, can you see? So here's our whole rabbit. So as I said, so the best way um, to joint a rabbit is that you're going to cut, actually probably this way, um, just down, find, you know, the, actually it's quite Natural, yeah. Yeah, the natural line. So that would be, let's have a look. So that's down here. So, and you're gonna have to break the bone through here. So you need a little bit of muscle at this point. That's what I gave Louise. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <The knife. laughs> that's why by, by throwing fire pits around, I've got very strong muscles. So they've got one there. Peter, would you pass me that blue plate, darling? So I'm going to put another one through, through here, through there. You can hear that break quietly. And there. Let's have a look. I've done that. Through there. There we go. You can hear the ball joint. Thank you. So we're going to put those on there. Just to show you, look at that delicious meat. Do you want to go with that in, John? So nice and crispy on here. Can you see that? Can you see that nice and closely? And beautiful succulent meat there. And as it is lunchtime, we are getting very hungry. Mm. There we go. And then, as we said, there is not much meat, you know, um, on the main part of it. So really enjoy the legs. Um, we have just used um, a marinade of rapeseed oil with a little bit of salt and pepper which we used a herb brush to brush on it. So it will have a little bit of, um, of taste with it um, but not, you know, not a huge amount. Lovely. And so, there, will, there will be a bit, fair bit on there so like a chicken you can put all the goodness okay. off there. And, uh, okay, just put it on there. Lovely. So this is our, um, this is our chicken or oh, even <laughs> oh, rabbit. A bit like a chicken. Yeah, yeah. a bit like, tastes <laughs> like chicken, doesn't everything? Right. right, so can you see that? Is that nice and close? So we are going to just enjoy this now um, with some of our corn on the cob and some of our um, jacket potato. So let's put it on here and let's just let's just dig in and let's just see what it tastes like. Do you want to grab a, do you want to grab a leg, John? Yeah. Can you see that there? Just uh, let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> Got me. <laughs> didn't do that last time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> that was impressive. Mm. Very succulent. Eat it. Mm. And kill. So that's really crispy skin, isn't it? Mm. That is really good. Mm. Well, mm. thank you very much for um, joining us with our bushcraft um, cookout here at Birchwood Forestry. Please try some of our recipes. The rabbit is particularly good. Just watch out for it, um, mm. <laughs> for how succulent it can really be. Um, and we're going to enjoy this now with some corn on the cob. If you've got any questions, please message us or anything that you'd like to know how to cook in the future. Um, we are always trying um, to show you different methods of cooking and taking our, um, our fire pits on the road. So any suggestions, as always, are really welcome. You can get us at louise at thewoody.com or on any social media. And to order some of Birchwood Forestry charcoal, how do you get hold of you, John? Uh, you can go to birchwoodforestry.co.uk um, or give me a call, uh, give me a Facebook or Instagram, or you know you can purchase it through Louise's website. So. Yep, through thewoody.com. We'll see you again. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.